Hi, I'm Ben Blau, and I'm here with my new friend Jenna. Hi, Jenna. And we're here to talk about the subject of intuition. Now, this is a subject that uh, fascinates me in particular uh, because it's one of those great unsolved mysteries of the universe. I mean, here we have a subject that's been studied simultaneously both by legitimate psychologists as well as parapsychologists for at least 130 years, if not more. And uh, even though their conclusions are definitely at odds with each other, one of the things that they agree on is that people seem to exhibit this quality in varying degrees. So I thought it might be fun to test your intuition. Okay. okay? So uh, I have something here in my pocket, and uh, I don't know if you've seen these before, but you might call these intuition cards. Have you ever seen anything like these yeah. before? Uh, but in case uh, anybody doesn't know, uh, these are the types of cards that are used in those psychic testing laboratories where they test for things like extrasensory perception, clairvoyance, telepathy, that sort of stuff. And a standard set consists of a star, there is a square, there are some wavy lines, there is a cross, and there's a circle. I'm going to give these to you and ask you to mix them up okay. as much as you want. Can I look at them? Oh, sure. Yeah. And when you're satisfied, I want you to lay them out into a face-up row right here on the table. Okay. okay. Now, was that intuition or was that random? Random. Random. Okay. So do you want to impose any of your intuition and rearrange any of the cards? It is up to you. No. You want to leave them as they are okay. because your intuition is telling you that uh, uh, this is the arrangement that you want. That's okay. I, I do want to point out that for each one of your cards, I have one that matches, okay? And there are 10 cards in total, and um, uh, I'm going to, uh, what I'd like you to do is to just try to remember this image where all of the cards match, okay. because we may or may not see it again. Okay. Because what I propose to do is to create pairs that don't match. Now, this is a little harder than it looks uh, for reasons that I will explain in uh, just a moment. Uh, but for example, you can see that here I've got a star. And I'm going to place my star right here with your cross. Okay? okay? And here I have a square. And I'll just place my square with your circle, right? So you can see those, those don't match, mm -hmm. right? And I've done the same thing for all of the remaining cards. So we've got five non-matching pairs. Now I realize that this might just seem kind of random, but it is perhaps a little bit more random than you realize. Uh, for example, my circle, I've got it paired up here with your star. That means that the other star can't be paired up with a circle. It has to be paired up with something else. Okay. Uh, here I've got my wavy lines paired up with your square. That means that the other square can't be paired up with wavy lines. It's got to be paired up with something else. So this is just as chaotic <laughs> as I could possibly have made it. Would you agree yeah. with that? All right. So now that uh, even though we have a fairly random situation here, I'm going to allow you to interfere with it. Okay. And to do that, I'd like you to give the entire packet one complete cut like that. Okay? okay? One complete cut. Very good. Now, Jenna, I don't know if you realize this. Many people don't realize this, which is when you cut a packet of cards, not very much changes. I mean, the starting point changes, but the cards remain in the same relative order. Mm -hmm. But when you cut a packet of cards into more than one group, and then you put them back together, uh, more complex displacements take place, and you can never really know exactly where those divisions are going to be, right? So let's try that. Um, would you cut just a few cards right here? And cut a few more cards right here. Fantastic. And can you stack these up? One, two, three. Great. Would you like to do that again, or are you happy with that I'm arrangement? Happy with You're that. happy with that arrangement. Now, this, of course, is just to ensure that you can't know the position or location of any one of those uh, shapes. Would you agree with that? Right. All right. Are you ready to test your intuition? I'm ready. All right, fine. Now, I'm going to lay these out as follows one, two, three, four, and five and one, two, three, four, and five. And I will tell you that at this moment, I'm thinking of just one of those shapes, one of those symbols. I'm not going to tell you which one. Okay. Um, and I just want you to relax and just to be open to whatever it is you experience here. Because in a moment, I'm going to snap my fingers. 
And when I do, I, on impulse, I simply want you to call out any number from 1 to 5. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Now. 4. 4. That's 4, yes? Yes. Okay. So we will just leave these two cards together like that. Okay. And we're going to see if they have any significance later on, okay? Okay. So you did that purely based on instinct, is that correct? Yes. All right, good. So uh, we've got eight cards left here, and I'm wondering if you could uh, just give them another one of those fancy cuts. Cut a few cards right here, Okay. a few more cards right here, and then stack them up, one, two, three. Great, we'll just do it right from there. Now with these eight cards left, I have an idea. I'm going to take half of them, one, two, three, and four. And uh, for this next part, um, I do have to look just for a moment, but I promise I'm not going to change anything. Okay. Because I'm thinking of, once again, one of those remaining symbols, okay? okay? And uh, in order to get to the symbol that I'm thinking of, uh, I'm going to give you a clue. And the clue is that we have to remove or eliminate exactly three cards. Okay. But I'm not going to tell you which three. For example, you could eliminate three cards from this half you could eliminate three cards from this half, or some combination. For example, you could do two from here and one from here, or one from here and two from here. You can split it up in any way you want, but I will tell you we have to eliminate three. Okay. So how do you want to do it? One from here, two from here. One from here and two from here. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's one from here, and then one, two from here. Okay. That leaves us with this pair of cards, and I'll just leave them right there, okay? okay? Now we have six cards left, and uh, I have another idea for this next part. Um, let's both think of a number, uh, some number between one and six. It can be any number you want between one and six. Now, I don't want you to think that my number is based on your number, so I'm going to tell you my number first. Okay. And my number is going to be... Um, Let's say three, okay? okay? What number were you thinking of? Three. You were also thinking yes, of three. Yes, I actually was. <laughs> well, that's great, but uh, knowing that my number was three, do you want to stick with your three or I do you want to change it? Go with two. You're going to go with two? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right, so watch carefully. This is one and this is two, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll just place it down right there. My number was three. Three. I'll do the exact same thing. One, two, this is card number three, and I will lay it right down there, okay? okay. So we've got uh, four cards left, not a whole lot we can do with them, and frankly, I don't even know what they are at this point, uh, but I have an idea. Let's just take two of them like this, and uh, I'll allow you to make one switch. Okay. But I don't mean to define exactly what I mean by switch for you. For example, you could take the two cards that are on the left, and you could switch them like so, we could do the same thing for the two cards that are on the right. I suppose you could switch those. Uh, or if you wanted to, I suppose we could take the top two cards and switch them. Or if you really wanted to, we could uh, switch the bottom two cards. The choice is entirely yours. I don't want you to decide yet, because in a moment, once again, I'm going to snap my fingers. And again, just on impulse, when I snap my fingers, I simply want you to call out left, right, top, or bottom. Okay. Now. Left. Left. That would be this pair, mm -hmm. okay? So I will swap those two cards very carefully. Well, let's see if it worked. Very interesting, okay? okay? So I think you have to agree that you have paired up each group of cards every step of the way according to your whim, according to your uh, uh, instinctive, intuitive capabilities every step of the way. And you remember when I told you at the beginning that uh, I wanted you to remember that image where all of the cards matched because we may or may not see it again, yeah. right? Well, let's see how you've done. Okay. It's almost a guarantee that you'll have matched at least one pair because that's just one out of five. Let's see what we're left with here. So we've got a cross and another cross. Okay. That's a pretty good sign, but it doesn't prove anything. It's almost guaranteed that you're going to match one out of five. The odds of matching two pairs are one out of 25. So let's have a look at these. What do we have? A square, one out of 25. 
Now the odds go up exponentially from there. Why don't you check the remaining three? Okay. What do you have? A star and a star. Okay. A circle and a circle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and two wavy lines. Oh my goodness. You just might be the real thing. Thank that you so is much. <laughs> Time to go out and buy a lottery ticket. Yes, my goodness. <laughs> that is insane. Thank you. Very cool. Wow.